Welcome for all in the sixth lecture of Energy Edit. In this lecture, we will talk about <coughs> a review of detailed energy edit methodology. And as uh, I talk in the fifth lecture about uh, phase one, uh, pre analysis and the planning of energy editing. Uh, under this uh, title, we will discuss analyzation of current and past performance, uh, checking power factor of the facility, uh, and energy billing data analysis. Uh, also, we will talk about uh, base load, peak load, and regression technique, and benchmarking, uh, and edit checklist, and energy bin diagram. Okay. Now, uh, as we explained in the previous uh, lectures, we have different uh, approaches of energy editing. And now we will talk about the detailed ones. Uh, as I said before, uh, the energy edit process uh, has two phases. In phase one, uh, we have many uh, preparations and pre-analysis and the planning. And in phase two, uh, we have a site visit and reporting. Uh, this is just a, a quick review, just for remember, and don't be confused. Uh, now, in the phase one, preparation and the pre-analysis and the planning, now we are still in the third step, identify uh, key personnel and schedule visit. We are still in this state in order to prepare our visit. Okay. And the, this is the phase two site visit and the reporting. Now, for uh, analyzation of current and past performance, uh, the required information in order to analyze this information. Uh, this information would be provided for energy editors from the client plus site visit plus observations of energy editors plus uh, metering results. And these results will help uh, the energy editors uh, 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 to understand energy usage profiles and also understanding the processes and what and what are the types of technologies that be used in the facility or organization and in order to uh, determine specific areas uh, on which edit should be constrained uh, especially for uh, mean uh, devices or equipment that cons that consume uh, a large amount of electricity, and also information about energy pulling data that will be analyzed. Uh, this uh, could uh, take us a check trends and conception uh, patterns of the facility. And this energy plan can help the energy editors in order to determine if any unnecessary charges uh, can be avoided by the facility management or term management, and if there is any excessive or insufficient of electricity supplied in order to remedy this issue, and also uh, to make them know about the tariff structures and checking if uh, the power factor uh, good or, or not good. Okay, now, what's the relation of uh, checking power factor with energy editing? Oh, this is very, very important issue because as we know that there are equipment, devices, uh, production processes that different machines 
all of these equipment and machines and devices uh, of course need uh, electricity in order to operate so the power factor of such devices or equipment is very important so uh, let us uh, review what's the power factor or pf power factor as we know that uh, is represent or equals the ratio of working power measured in kilowatt to apparent power uh, kva uh, the equation of pf equals uh, working power kilowatt divided by apparent power uh, measured in kilovolt ampere uh, and uh, power factor uh, also uh, known as demand so we are using or uh, energy uh, or energy editors uh, uh, always uses power factor analyzer or sometimes called power analyzer where they can be used uh, to measure both uh, working power or real power uh, and also uh, the apparent power and also power factor it is important to know that if the power factor uh, below uh, 95 percent uh, this uh, value may be not insufficient or not or not good why because if the power factor is low that's mean uh, will cause increasing uh, overall cost of power that is mean we need uh, a large amount of electricity because the device or equipment will consume a high value of current and this may be caused to uh, increasing the heat of the equipment and causing the damage of insulation or damage or circuit components of the equipment or device and this will cause uh, a reduction in useful power so the final output power will be reduced so uh, in this case will cause increase in conductors and equipment sizes that is mean in order to uh, compensate the energy losses we must increase the size of equipment and this represent uh, uh, loss cost so it is very important for energy editors to check the power factor of all equipment electrical equipment and organizations or in the factory because it's uh, affect the energy consumption and as we know the editors uh, targets uh, uh, is to reduce energy consumption okay now this uh, picture represent uh, power quality analyzer okay now let us talk about energy billing uh, data analysis uh, and we will talk about an example uh, we have in the left side this uh, diagram uh, represent the significant uh, peak in electrical conception in February uh, 2016. As we know, as, as we see, this is the energy consumption in kilowatt hour, and this is uh, the time or month. This is the distribution of energy consumption. So while we are uh, implementing energy editing, we must prepare like this uh, diagram or profile of energy consumption. And also we have on the right side, we have a monthly indicator, indicator of seasonal of gas consumption. And uh, this energy edit establish of this uh, fluctuation as we see the uh, monthly profile uh, of gas consumption variable varies according with uh, month as we see here maximum and will start to decrease to minimum value then uh, 
uh, increase and uh, reach a stop value or peak value and then uh, decrease according to the nature uh, of the, uh, the functions that required from the uh, uh, this equipment that con uh, which consumed the uh, gas fuel and uh, this represent the fluctuating uh, energy consumption by the equipment uh, so also I would like to remark we must uh, uh, take our attention while we are uh, or for uh, energy editors preparing their uh, analysis and calculation uh, they must prepare like this uh, profiles of energy consumption and take uh, their consideration the variability of energy consumed okay another issue that uh, we take in our consideration is the pace load or also called continuous load which represent the minimum electrical uh, demand that is needed over uh, a day, 24 hours, uh, and sometimes uh, maybe uh, as a constant power and not change as much the variation of continuous load may uh, be uh, so small. Okay, and the second term is the peak load. Peak load because the peak demand over a day and this uh, may be take a short time when the electricity demand increased we will uh, reach for the peak value or peak point of electricity consumption we can say that in this uh, figure as we see uh, this is the load in megawatt okay uh, over uh, a day, this is the number of hours per day, and we see that this is this uh, the lower uh, figure represents the base load as we see as a constant, while the peak load varies according to the number of equipment or devices that uh, will uh, be in operation or or a uh, cut-off or uh, stopping case. Uh, this is the difference between the peak load and the base load. Now, what's uh, the relation between these uh, terms and uh, our uh, implementation of uh, energy ed editing? Yeah, it is very important issue because while we are implementing energy editing uh, uh, we have different equipment different devices uh, different operation on the processes of production the facility and maybe uh, this equipment uh, need different values uh, of uh, electricity consumption so the load will be uh, may be constant or may be variable over the time and we must take our attention while we are preparing our uh, calculation and the, the final report that will be provided to the uh, facility management okay let us see another issue regression very very important issue what's the regression now, we have different uh, parameters or variables, okay? Regressions rep represent the relationship between two or more variables in a data set, okay? So, the regression uh, using the principle of minimum squares technique in order to fit a line, okay, a line through many observations of data set to examine how individual dependent variable will be influenced by uh, at least one independent variable okay and uh, there is a equation for uh, calculating the coefficient of determination uh, which equals 
correlation coefficient uh, squared and this is also the equation correlation coefficient uh, okay and these parameters I put their uh, definition uh, x represent data uh, point in data set x and also y represent data points in data set y and so on and uh, uh, always uh, and preferable to make this calculation using Excel sheets. Okay, and this uh, uh, relationship for for regression very important in our calculation and uh, energy editing. Now. Uh, regression analysis in the field of energy editing uh, can give us energy consumption profiles from pills or energy monitoring system so this is the important of regression technique because it will provide, provide us powerful analytical tool to identify what is driving of energy consumption also in the field of building the building data can give us energy consumption uh, versus the weather uh, showing if it is showing poor or average or strong coefficient of det determination r squared value so as we know uh, the, weather, uh, the weather data and the energy consumption in the building there is a direct relation or direct coefficient of determination uh, so in our calculation we applied the regression technique to see how the effects uh, and the influence between the variation of weather data such as temperature, uh, humidity, wind speed, and so on, with the uh, versus uh, electricity consumption in specified building. Also, in our calculation of heating degree day analysis, provide uh, us analyzing space uh, heating load against. Uh, variance and outside temperature so uh, the regression technique very important to see how the degree of influence by independent variable with an independent variable and see what's the value of R squared in order to judge how the, if this is the effect is the effect strong or there is no correlation between the uh, different variables and so on. So it's very important to take our attention while we are calculating. So you will see example of regression. As we see, there is a values uh, for heating degree day and uh, electricity consumption. And this is the regression uh, uh, analysis. This line uh, represents uh, whenever the R squared value uh, is higher, it means that there is a greater influence driver on energy consumption. As we see, that R squared uh, 93.6, okay. A percentage of course and here is point uh, so r squared here means that uh, the variability in energy consumption uh, influenced uh, strongly with the variability uh, in the weather data as I said before so whenever the temperature is example increased we need high electricity load and built uh, in the building so there is, there is a, a, a larger influence or the or a big influence uh, or correlation uh, between the weather data and energy consumption in the building okay 
Now, let us uh, explain about another concept. Uh, use the benchmarking. What's meaning of benchmarking? Benchmarking represents the comparison of energy performance against similar external operations or similar industry sectors. And we will use it in our uh, activities or, or processes of energy auditing in the buildings. So, benchmarking activity carry, carried out at a significant energy user. So, whenever we see there is uh, equipment that consume uh, a high quantity of electricity or there is a building which consume a high uh, quantity of electricity we will compare this building with similar buildings okay in order to make our uh, calculation in the field of benchmarking so internal benchmarking for a specified facility as example if there is no external uh, benchmarking data available maybe a company uh, can develop its own benchmarks from Historical energy use data, uh, or when uh, she purchased a new equipment, or uh, the, uh, the facility uh, uh, make a new line of production. So it can uh, depend on uh, uh, its historical data or archive data whenever uh, there is no external uh, benchmarking. Let us see this example, sample of building benchmarking data. This table represents the building type and electricity, a typical benchmark in kilowatt hour per meter square. And here, fossil thermal typical benchmark, also kilowatt hour per meter square. And this represents the source of benchmarking. As we see here, general office, the electricity consumption here 95 and uh, thermal uh, fossil thermal benchmark uh, 120. So uh, while we are doing uh, energy auditing for a specific uh, general office, we can compare the electric electricity consumption with this value and we, while we are doing. Uh, uh, fuel consumption we can compare with this. Uh, of course there is a standards uh, for dif 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 different uh, buildings general office supermarket hotels uh, swimming pool and so on another issue and benchmarking um, uh, there is uh, a technical uh, memorandum published by the Chartered Institution of Building Services Engineers, uh, CIPSE. Uh, this is the significant uh, energy use benchmark indices, significant energy use, uh, typical performance benchmark, and uh, and this table items to consider a prior to benchmark. As we see, we have different equipment boilers uh, here. Uh, benchmarking boiler efficiency. The criteria for boilers we use uh, for uh, criteria or the boiler efficiency for comparison between specified. Uh, boiler in the facility and the typical performance benchmark for boiler from these standards or indices. And the, the item to consider here, boiler type, and also we must take in our consideration uh, uh, fuel source or fuel type. For compressors, and chillers, and lighting, and transport in the same direction, okay? As we see, for each type of this equipment, there is a typical performance benchmark and also there is a typical items to be considered. And this 
uh, tables uh, are available uh, on the internet that anyone can uh, download and compare uh, between the specified uh, equipment and the specified facility and the uh, benchmarking table as he or she okay Now, uh, another issue uh, uh, is uh, developing an uh, audit checklist. In order to identify significant energy use on uh, respective operating parameters, we will use the, uh, as example, a steam boiler, boiler checklist example in this lecture. Uh, for energy editors, must prepare uh, uh, audit checklist as like in this example, uh, according to the type of equipment. This, uh, of course, for uh, steam boiler uh, audit checklist, and have different uh, points. While uh, the energy editors uh, check uh, the uh, steam boiler and the facility and. Uh, uh, depend on his observation as uh, will be uh, uh, the mark on the square uh, in front of each uh, uh, point as example gas input, steam output, feed water volume, condensate return rate and so on. So it's very important to uh, for energy editors to prepare the checklist before uh, implementing site visit according to the equipment uh, and uh, devices uh, and uh, production processes or processes in the facility uh, each type of this equipment need a specified checklist that must be prepared uh, pre-site visit okay this is uh, the uh, simple idea about the audit checklist now now another issue uh, energy wave diagram it is a visualizing factor which can uh, help us in contributing energy use very important useful when drawing up a checklist this related to the checklist and the uh, final report that we will provide uh, for the uh, organization management and also in order to identify energy efficiency opportunity as example in this uh, uh, questions that prepared for uh, by the energy editors uh, during the visiting of the site the energy editor prepare this question what do i want to do with the compressed air this is uh, of course for a compressed air system what requires the compressed air what is the fundamental piece of work that i want compressed air to do is there another way to, for the, of delivering the output that requires using less or no energy can i use a less energy intensive as alternative what is the minimum specification required the energy editors uh, prepare this question okay now this question can be transported and for this Venn diagram, okay? And this, uh, the answer of this question will be transformed by the energy editors to this figure according to this question that related with the energy. Here, the uh, energy editors uh, suggest many opportunities as for example reduce the pressure that is related to the energy or increase energy efficiency of motor okay 
or use multi-stage compressor instead of one-stage compressor or uh, also uh, uh, discuss the compressor type and using variable speed drive control and variable inlet volume and uh, repair uh, the leak leaks or leakage and pipes or replacing the filters and so so this Venn diagram consists of many layers housing uh, operation and maintenance that is related to the repair leaks and variable inlet volume related to the control system so this issue uh, related to the uh, control system that the specified motor work on the, uh, the energy editor must take his his or her attention while checking the motors if there is uh, a variable speed control and this is related to the plant design or uh, what's the type uh, of the technology this is uh, related to the type of compressor and so on. So, all the, uh, these questions that are prepared uh, before uh, implementing the site visit uh, uh, by the energy editors will transform to Venn diagram and these uh, suggestions from the energy editor will provided to the energy uh, manager and the facility in order to take their a plan to reduce or to improve uh, the way uh, of, uh, of energy uh, consumption or to improve uh, the equipment or for repair for uh, suggestion of new equipment and so on this is very very important uh, issue uh, in energy editing okay now this is uh, the end of uh, the sixth lecture i hope uh, we will meet in the uh, seventh lecture and this of course the references of this lecture okay thank you for listening and i will say goodbye and i hope you all and then seven lecture okay